whether in driving down a highway somewhere and seeing on the side of a hill or perhaps in a picture someplace and there are three crosses, people know what that represents as it's about Christ and the two criminals who were sentenced to death with him. The question being asked in this video today is, did Christ actually die on a cross? There are many arguments on both sides of this. So let's take a look at this. The biblical account itself really gives the clearest evidence of what is true. The accounts of Christ's death are recorded by four witnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're simply going to focus on a few verses in the book of John and what's recorded there in chapter 19. So this is going to be in John chapter 19, verses 31 through 34. It starts here by saying, Therefore, because it was the preparation, and the Jews did not want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was an high day. And also the people understand this was at a particular time of the season where there were holy days, annual holy days, in the book of Leviticus. Those things are recorded there in Leviticus 23. But it gives an order of these things. There is the weekly Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, and a weekly cycle of seven days. And then there was the annual observance of what is called the Passover, which is what this account is about. And then the day after Passover was the first day of what's referred to as the first day of unleavened bread. It's the first annual high day or Sabbath of a particular year, of a new year. And so when the Jews are talking about this being the preparation, it's the preparation getting ready for the Sabbath because they didn't work on the Sabbath. There was no work to be done on a Sabbath day, whether it was the weekly Sabbath or an annual Sabbath. In this particular case, this is specifically about an annual Sabbath. This isn't the preparation day of Friday. This is another preparation day for an annual high day. So it says, because it was the preparation, and the Jews did not want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was an high day. So right here it's showing that it's not a weekly Sabbath, it's an annual Sabbath. It's a high day, a holy day. Now, first of all, right here, the word cross, it's not accurately translated here. It's a Greek word, starus, S-T, if you'd spell it in English, it's with the letters. It's S-T-A-U-R-O-S, starus. And that simply means it has a definition of a single wooden pole or beam. Now, the etymology of words is very interesting, and it is in this particular word as well, because there are a lot of words that change over time, even words in English. And again, etymology of words sometimes is very interesting because they can change a great deal over time, over just a, a few hundred years. They can change drastically in some cases. And so it is with this Greek word here. If you go back in time and you begin to focus in on a particular, uh, this particular word and how it's being used by writers of any period of time there, there are a lot of words that changed, and this is one of them. So it changed in its meaning over a period of time. So if you go back and look at a period of time, uh, as an example here, during the time of the Greek classical writer Homer, uh, which parallels a period of time earlier, several centuries ago, you will find that this particular word is only used in an instance of being something that is a single pole or a single beam, but it's never used in any fashion or form as a cross fixture. There are ways, just like in any language, if you don't have a specific word to describe something like a cross, they can talk about two beams that are crossed over each other, but you'd have to use all those words. Two poles that are crossed over each other, whether they be in a T shape or an X shape, because there are examples like that in writing as well, but you have to explain the addition of more than just one beam, more than just one pole in order to accomplish this. So again here, the writings of that particular age uh, going through whether they be classical writings of any kind or specifically here, times of, of the apostles, of the disciples, and that went on for many years after 31 A.D., on up to 60, 80, 90 A.D., and this word starus still being used here, 
but it was used at this particular time, meaning a pole. Now, there are a lot of arguments made back and forth on this because this is a difficult subject. It's a difficult subject for people to address because there are different ideas, different beliefs out there. And so this causes a, a great deal of emotion for a lot of people. So let's continue on because just the use of a word and especially how things have changed etymology through time, it's, it's really difficult to say this is it. This is exactly what's prov proven here. So next there is the statement that the Jews did not want the bodies of the three sentenced to die to remain hanging there on their annual Sabbath that was about to begin, that was going to begin as soon as the sun was set. So not only on the Sabbath days, annual or weekly, was there no work to be done, but the timing and counting of time at that particular age, and for a long time before and a long time after, wasn't at midnight like we have today when a new day started. A new day started when the sun set upon one day, disappeared on the horizon, then that would be the start of a new day. So the start of a new day actually began in the evening as it became nightfall, as it was growing toward night. And then the following day, the daytime portion obviously, completing that day until sunset, then another day would begin. So this is what's being discussed here. The Jews didn't want the bodies to remain on the cross, as it states here, until a specific moment in time. So pole or cross at this particular point, they didn't want it to remain there, or any of the three, because of the high day, because they didn't want any work to be done. They wanted the bodies to be taken down. They didn't want them dying during the high day and then the necessity for someone to go and take them down and do work on the Sabbath day. But the next account here of what it goes into, of what is discussed, does indeed answer the question. The greatest proof of all, absolute proof of how Christ died is answered in the rest of the verse here in the account and why this took place and what was happening at this time. So again, it states that the Jews did not want the bodies to remain on the storus, on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. Then it goes on to say, so they ask Pilate that their legs might be broken so that their bodies could be carried away. So they wanted their, their legs to be broken. So what is the purpose of this? How is this going to speed up the process of death? Well, that's what needs to be answered. And that should be the question that is asked here because it reveals everything. It truly does. The Jewish leaders, again, wanted them dead and be taken down, the bodies disposed of. And so they went and asked that the legs could be broken. And this is what is taking place. So let's just demonstrate that. There are two ways two arguments here that are out there of how he died. One is that it was on a pole with his hands up here and a single spike going through his hands just as it was with the feet. So people are familiar with the one spike going through both feet overlapping each other, but some are and some aren't familiar with the hands being over the head and perhaps then a single spike being used there. But the most popular idea and belief that's out there is with this, the arms stretched out and a single spike in each hand holding the body. Now, for the breaking of legs, this becomes exceedingly important because it was a process and the purpose behind it was to speed up death. So here is the account. Here hands are stretched out, the legs are broken, and you know what happens? You can't support yourself from below anymore. You're hanging more just from these two here, from the hands, which is hard on the body, and death is going to be speeded up somewhat. But if they're hanging out here and your body begins to shrug, you can kind of imagine, just you could try it and put your hands out there straight out and see what it's like when there is no support anymore except from these two positions here holding the whole body up. And so the body is going to come down and there's going to be a lot of stress and strain, but I can still talk and I can still breathe. But if you put the hands above the body like this with a single spike and you release all the weight now to be here because you see what they did is they would push themselves up 
in order to breathe well. And so by breaking the legs, they could no longer push themselves upward. And so when you put your entire body mass above your head with one spike and you begin to come down like this, and if you could stretch out like that, just try it. it I have a hard time speaking here. But if you, I'm still supporting myself, however, by my legs because they're not removed from underneath me right here. But if I was, had a spike here, it begins to choke you off fast and you die quickly. And that was the point of all this because this event took place just a little bit before, not too long, maybe an hour or so, but it was really getting close now to sunset. And the whole idea, break the legs, they suffocate, they die, take the bodies down, dispose of them so they're not there once the sun sets. The only thing is now, Christ was already dead when they came around, and that's what part of the story shows here. So, and that becomes another important factor in part of this, but that was the purpose for breaking the legs. It's so they suffocate right away. Otherwise, to hang out here like this, it may be more laborious, it may be more difficult for them to breathe, but they're going to be able to do so for several hours, and that would be on into then the holy day, and that isn't what they wanted. So this alone really shows how he died, that it wasn't on a cross, it was on a pole. And the science itself, the physical description of what is being given here, and the purpose for breaking the legs reveals it all very quickly here, because the timing of these events is very specific in Scripture here. This was getting really close to sundown, there wasn't much time left. And so, going on with the whole story here, let's just read it. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then the other, who had been nailed to the poles with him. But when they came to Christ, they saw that he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. So he was already dead. Because something happened right at 3 o'clock that afternoon. Very specific in the details in the scriptures here of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the entire story. Each one tells a portion of the story from their own vantage point. And some of them are just a little bit different because it's different authors and their different perspective of everything, of what they witnessed. But it makes it very clear here what took place around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And so it says here they were already dead, or he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. Because one of the soldiers, so it tells why here, because one of the soldiers who was there had pierced, had earlier pierced, if you will then, because it happened earlier, so that would be a, really a better translation of it, had earlier pierced, but had already pierced his side, it says, with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. So it was then that he died. It wasn't, so when they came around to break the legs, they didn't break his legs. Now this is important too, because the verses down here, just a little bit past this, verse 36 and 37, go on to explain why these events happen in this manner. Because everything that Christ did on that Passover day had to fulfill Old Testament prophecies about the coming of a Messiah, the Christ. Both words mean the same. The word Messiah in the Old Testament, the word that's used as Christ in the New Testament, refers to the anointed one, that's what it means, the anointed one to be king because of God's kingdom that was to come. And so, and they were looking for that time, when are you going to come and establish the kingdom of God? And so these are the kinds of things they were discussing uh, with Christ before he even died and afterwards as well. And so it states here in verse 36, for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Because if he didn't fulfill everything, then he wasn't the Messiah. He wasn't the Christ. So all those Old Testament scriptures about the Messiah had to be fulfilled in a very specific manner. And it says here, so John is quoting the Old Testament scripture, not one of his bones shall be broken, which is out of Psalms 34 and verse 20. Then going on in verse 37, it says, again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced, making it very clear how he was to die. He wasn't to die. He wasn't to have any of his bones broken or he wouldn't be the Messiah. And on top of that, his blood had to spill out to the earth because he was the Passover lamb of God. And Passover lambs 
had to have their blood spilled to the earth. That was part of the, the process here that pictured something that Christ was going to come to fulfill as our Passover. The one who would die, whose blood would spill to the earth, whereby sins can be forgiven. And so, again, this one here then, uh, John is simply quoting out of Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, a specific verse here. So these things were fulfilled, and John made it clear that they were. Now, you can read about this and candidly, many other false stories, a lot of things that are misunderstood, just like I've mentioned here about the preparation day and Friday, because when you understand these things, there was a lot of confusion and has been um, scholars, especially ancient scholars, who didn't understand the law of the Old Testament. They didn't understand the Jewish traditions. And so when they looked at these things, they thought the preparation day was Friday because that was the normal day to prepare for the Sabbath. So more work was done on Friday in preparing for the seventh day Sabbath. But this here was a high day. It was an annual holy day. And so there are other questions that need to be addressed as to whether he died on a Friday or not and how that affects the story of Easter and the like. So these are, these are things that people ought to know, ought to be informed of. And that's the purpose of some of this. So again, you can read about this and many other false stories about Christ and about God in my new book entitled, When the Countdown Ends. And you can find that at CountdownEnds.com.